Show, the new Freedom 96.9. All right, guys, welcome back to the show, 7.35 a.m. And I don't know about you, but I love Oklahoma. I love Oklahoma. I love the people of Oklahoma. And I love projects that happen in Oklahoma. So that's why I'm excited about our next guest, Bryce Turner, a native Oklahoman who is working on a project here in Oklahoma. We're going to get to the details. But, you know, he is a self-made entrepreneur and author transformed a life once entrenched in crime and incarceration into a narrative of redemption, faith, and family. Good morning, Bryce. Good morning. Good morning, Jake. Man, it's so good to have you and your beautiful wife here in studio. She, she's not going to hop on the mic, but she's uh, here with us. But okay. uh, glad to have you here, and you have an incredible story. I don't know all the details yet. Thank you for the book you brought here. Okay. I'm going to dig into it. It's called Off the Front Line. Tell us a little bit about your story. Okay, uh, but first, before we get into that, I want to say good morning to Oklahoma. Yes. Because I love Oklahoma, too, and Tulsa and Oklahoma City. So good morning. Good and morning. all my loved ones. <laughs> uh, the name of my book is Off the Front Line, and it's really a life story about where I come from and where it all started. And we all started kind of like right here in Oklahoma City, me and my family. And then we branched out. My dad was in the military, so we moved to uh, Memphis, Tennessee. And from there, we moved on to Detroit, Michigan. So from Detroit, and my mom and dad got a divorce. So then we moved back to Oklahoma. I'm the oldest. I'm like 10 years older than my younger brothers. And uh, I chose to move back here with my mom to help raise my little brothers. Wow. So this is where it started. You've really been all over the place. And yes. so you have some perspective. I, too, have traveled a lot, been a lot of places, and there's no place like Oklahoma. There's no place like home. <laughs> but... <laughs> In this process of traveling and just what's happening, you, I mean, got entrenched into a life of crime, incarceration. Tell us about that and, and what brought you out. Well, what got me in is that I needed some money. When I was young, there wasn't a father figure around at the time. I felt that I had to fill the shoes of my father. Hmm. So I, at 12 years old, I was out cutting grass, picking up cans and in the neighborhood and just doing whatever I could to help my mom with, with, with just feeding us helping my little brothers out and from there i graduated to <laughs> the life of crime mm, right <laughs> right know, selling a little weed doing a little cocaine now it started at a young age you know how old was, were you there i had to be about 13. wow yeah i was about 13 or 14 and so i'm in a hood right there on the east side of oklahoma city and my my uh people who i looked up to were drug dealers Pimps, robbers, mm. <laughs> gangsters. <laughs> was, it, was it easy for you to get involved there? I mean, you, you knew all these people already. It was just so easy to get involved? Well, for me it was because really the game chose you. Mm. You know, I was just out hustling, and, and the older guys seen that I was about my business. And they, they recruited came to, you. Yeah, basically. Wow. Wow. So this led to incarceration. Yes. It led to incarceration. I ended up getting in trouble. Uh, the feds indicted me and how old well, were you i was uh, at the time now i'm like 21 okay i had just completed college graduated from oklahoma state university and about four months later i was in the <laughs> federal penitentiary wow. wow you know and they had me under investigation for like 18 months and they could arrest me before i graduated that would have been horrible so at least they waited. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so you were, you were dealing then through through college and everything. And, yes. And, uh, well, yeah, a absolutely. I'm glad you at least graduated there. Yes. But then go right from that into the pen. Right. And how long were you in? Um, I went a few times. The first time I went, it was like I got sentenced three years. I had to do six months in and two and a half years on probation. Okay. Okay. And then you're obviously not in. So what no. happened? Well, it just comes from a lot of learning, and I'm consistent, and I don't give up. So I, 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 I was released from the first time in El Reno, and I decided I wasn't through with the game because I just made a mistake. So I can, I can correct that. <laughs> I want, they won't catch me like that again. <laughs> right, right. The so, mistake wasn't dealing drugs. The mistake was getting caught. Yeah, right? the mistake so, was getting caught, and uh, I knew what I'd done, you know, to get caught. So. Uh, but I got back into the game. I was still on the front line. That's why my book is based and called Off the Front Line. Okay. Because I was on the front line. I could have hurt more people than I did with drugs or, you know, just out there doing street stuff. Or I could have gotten killed myself, you know. But I also went through the life of drugs <laughs> in the process of uh, me hustling, you know. So uh, then I went back to prison. 
Mm. Got out. I tried it again for the third time. Wow. Went back to prison again. So, you know, all these times I'm going back, I'm thinking I have to do something different. You know, because evidently I'm not a good crook. <laughs> <laughs> I keep getting caught. <laughs> right. So uh, I decided, you know, and that's when I was starting to make a change in my life and learn about the Bible and, you know, learn about Jehovah. Wow. Wow. And so you came out different the next time. Yes, at least my mindset. But like as of today, I'm not telling you I'm all the way transformed, but I'm in transition. Right. I'm a lot better than I was yesterday. Yeah, and you're telling your story. You've written your book. Um, like I said, uh, thanks for the copy. I look forward to digging into you're it welcome. and reading your story. Okay. And and you're looking to make this into a, a movie, right? Yes, yes. I have some people. Um, it took a while for me to get this dream, to make this dream come true. I started writing this book back in 1998. That's how long this book been alive. Wow. Since 1998, I was in Kentucky, correctionals. <laughs> uh. And uh, I started writing a book. I had to reflect on what all I had been through in life. But that happened in 1998, and I was released in 2005, and a, a 2003, and the book was published in 2005. So ever since 2005, I, really since 98, I already had this vision that one day it could be on the big screen. Wow, wow. Uh, you know, I think somebody out there listening, I, I just sense that they have a book in them. And so that's oh, yeah. a huge encouragement that, hey, while you were in prison, you started your book. And it took a while to finish, but you got yes. it finished. And now you're looking beyond that to putting it on the big screen. Yes, sir. A and I want to talk about that because you're having a casting call, huh? Yes, I'm having a casting call tomorrow at uh, 2121 South Portland. And it'll be like from one to three, but I'm thinking it'll be much longer. However many people show up, we're going to make sure that you get interviewed and you get screen tested. Okay, tell that address one more time. It's 2121 South Portland. Okay, and is there a way that people can get in touch with you if they want to find out details? Yes, you can contact me at uh, Bryce Turner, 1964, at hotmail.com. Okay, Bryce, that's B R Y C E, yeah. Bryce Turner, 1964. At at hotmail.com. Okay, reach out to the guys. Hey, Oklahoma's becoming and has become a hub for the movie industry. And so even even major studios are coming out to, to Oklahoma to produce major right. films like Killers of the Flower Moon. Yeah, great uh, movie. Absolutely. And so, uh, you know, I, I, there's a lot of aspiring actors and actresses here and filmmakers. And so if you guys are interested in being part of a, a major production, then this is an opportunity. So reach out to Bryce. Bryce Turner, 1964 at Hotmail.com, or you can show up. What time? Uh, you can show up from 1 at 1 o'clock Okay, 1 o'clock at, at where? 2121 South Portland. Okay, hope you guys got the details there. We'll post it on the Facebook live stream, too, in case you didn't get that address. But, hey, it's an awesome opportunity to be a part of a great Oklahoma-focused project telling an Oklahoma story. Uh, so, Bryce, I so appreciate your time here. Uh, just in the last few seconds here, what, what advice would you offer to anyone out there that is struggling in life like you were? Um, to stay prayed up, number one. Hmm. That, that's, that's the golden. That, that's the root, rule to success. That's the rule to happiness, to peace. Uh, to just stay prayed up and stay humble. That's what, my, that's what my deal is. And to all the authors out there, like when I was incarcerated, I was worried about how am I going to get my book published Everyone who have a book, you can come to us right here at Big Chief Publishing. Oh, wow. Big Chief Publishing. Go yes. check them out. Bryce, I so appreciate your time here this morning. We'll get those details posted on our website and Facebook page as well, so you guys listening can be sure to get in touch with him and help publishing your book as well. Yes. So, hey, I appreciate that. You guys stay tuned. We have Cinder Langford, my interview with him, coming up in the next segment. And so you are listening to The Jake Merrick Show right here on Freedom 96.9. So glad to be with you here this morning. Glad to have Bryce in the studio. Bryce, appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Any final words before we leave here? Yes, I just want to say, uh, give a shout out to my sponsors from Big Chief Productions. Uh, we're in collaboration with OTU Media, Red River Media, Whirlwind Productions, and Enclave Studios. So I just want to say thank you to all those people and all my sponsors 
And thank you, Jehovah. Thank uh, you. So good. So thank good. Thank you to I, you, Jake. Absolutely. And, and Freedom 96.9. That's thank right. You. The best station on radio right here, Freedom 96.9. Yes, I appreciate all you guys tuning into the show. We've got a great show lined up for you tomorrow, so you guys stay tuned for that. In the meantime, you guys keep standing, keep fighting. Never forget the sovereignty of your person, your state, and your God. Hey, we win in the end. Keep standing strong. I'll see you tomorrow. The Jake Merrick Show is a product of Freedom 96.9. All content is the property of Champlin Broadcasting. Any use of the broadcast without consent is prohibited. Waking up, waking up.